Welcome to Cypress Hills Interprovincial Park. We're Matt and Carla, a Canadian couple with two totally different backgrounds, sharing our experience and advice about traveling in Canada. After almost a decade of world travel, we decided to focus on our home country of Canada and see how deep we could go. This started with a 150 day road trip from coast to coast to coast, showcasing some of the best things to do in each province and territory. We thought we'd see it all on that road trip, but we barely scratched the surface. So follow along as we continue to explore the second largest country on earth. We've heard so many great things about this place, but it's actually our first time here. And it's unique for a number of reasons. One of which, as you heard, it's an interprovincial park. So it actually shares two provinces. It's in Alberta and it's in Saskatchewan. We're in the Alberta portion right now. And we actually arrived last night and we checked in at the Elkwater Lake Lodge and Resort. A beautiful lodge, they actually have cabins. We have a full suite with a kitchen and a living room, but there's also a ton of campgrounds in the area that you can stay at as well. But we're so excited to explore. As you can see, I have a geeky helmet on because we're getting ready to jump on some e-bikes and go find some trails. at biking so I love e-bikes because it really makes it easier to go especially up the hill and we actually stopped at the visitor center and we found out that e-bikes are not allowed on the biking trails and hiking trails you're only allowed to use them on the paved roads or main roads so we decided to go and explore the main viewpoints of the area Well, we made it to Horseshoe Canyon. I could see why it's one of the best views in the park. You get uninterrupted views, according to this, all the way to Medicine Hat. Today's a little smoggy, so I don't think we could see quite that far, but either way, it's well worth the trip. And it's a cool place to see all the badlands that are below the hills, because one of the cool facts about Cypress Hills is that it's one of the few areas in Western Canada that actually escaped the glaciation period. And that's what has allowed it to develop a unique set of flora and fauna that you can see all around the park. After biking for about 10 minutes, we now made it to head of the mountain Lookout Point, which is the highest point in Cypress Hills at 1,466 meters, which is actually the highest point between the Rocky Mountains and Labrador. For lunch, we decided to come to 1234 Cafe and Pub. It's one of the most popular places in town. It's also one of the few places in town and uh, we decided to uh, take a trip back to Mexico in honor of Carla's ancestry. <laughs> We're having some Mexican street food because we have seen this there. We've never seen it here before, but it's called taco in a bag. It's basically, you know, old Dutch nacho chips. They cut it open and then they put all the taco stuff in there. The meat, the lettuce, tomatoes, sour cream, salsa. Can't go wrong. Mexican food is always a great option. I love it. How dare you call this Mexican food? Well, no. I'm not quite the same, but it's good. That's why it's called Mexican, because it's good. That's it. <laughs> Our original plan was to actually go uh, canoeing because we always go paddle boarding, but it turns out our lodge no longer rents out canoes or paddle boards or anything like that. So we actually brought our own paddle board. So if you're planning to go on the water, just make sure you bring everything you need. I think that paddle board's like three times bigger than you. As much as we love paddle boarding, I must say I really want to go water skiing. That's like one of the things on my bucket list. We see a lot of people doing it here as well as uh, tubing behind the boat. And this place really feels like a water sports playground. It's a much bigger lake than I imagined. And 
There's people doing kayaking, canoeing, boating, fishing. There's people on the beach. It just seems like kind of a little, little slice of paradise in southeastern Alberta. I definitely don't want to fall into this part of the lake. You can see the plants underneath and I will freak out for sure. I have bigger arms than Matthew. I made it first. Now on the way back, we're just gonna relax. Let ourselves go with the current. Oh. <laughs> Almost made it. Because you, Matthew, wanted to set up the I, camera. They say even flying, the hardest part is taking off and landing. Well, we didn't go too far tonight for supper. Hint, nothing's that far here in El Cuadro. But we're actually at Bugler's, which is the restaurant of the lodge we're staying at. We ordered some coconut shrimp, which is always one of our favorite appetizers, and a New York strip loin, which looks delicious. But we just wanted to order something quick and share because we want to get outside for sunset. We're here at 1234 Cafe and we've been here actually for breakfast and lunch a couple of times because it's pretty much the best place in town and they have very good latte so definitely recommend coming for breakfast. We've noticed that there's so many flowers around Elkwater Lake and we were wondering what kind of flower this was and it turns out according to my app that it's wild bergamot. Oh, we'll see the smell. <laughs> good almost like a <laughs> to me it just smells like a, a pencil <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's not a bad smell you miss half of your smell you're always stuffed up yeah i have a lot of allergies to all this kind of stuff Today we're gonna to be focused on doing some short hikes in the area. One thing we've noticed, even though it's a relatively small area, there's lots of hiking trails here, lots of mountain biking trails. So we're gonna be doing some of the ones that are closer to town. We started off with the shoreline trail and now we're about to get on the Fire Rock Trail and go through the forest. As many hikes as we've done, I don't think we've ever been in a forest quite like this one. There's so many of these tall flowers, I guess, I don't know. We're not very well versed in flora and fauna, but it looks very different than anything we've experienced before. Well, I definitely think this trail is made for mountain bikers because there's quite a bit of a uh, little jumps and dips stuff like this it actually looks like it'd be good for kind of anyone from beginners to intermediate i wish i had brought my bike because i don't think there's anywhere to rent them and it really looks like a lot of fun we've been hiking for about an hour and a half just through the forest and i always get kind of nervous because there's so many signs about cougars here <laughs> but nothing nothing yet thank goodness and we made it to the first viewpoint. We were actually on the trail and we said, what's that sound? And they were, there are cows over on the other side. You can hear them all the way here. Well, that was an even better view we got. I still wish they'd kind of cut the trees off at the top so we could see the lake better but uh, this is the old baldy trail this is the trail we're taking right back into town as you can probably see behind me I'm starting to hear all the people at the campgrounds now and that's one thing we've noticed here we see a lot of families on the trail and in town in general this seems like a paradise for families all the campgrounds there's the lake where it all has access to all kinds of water sports and the beach itself and then of course the mountain biking trails and definitely when we have kids we're coming back Another viewpoint we were told we shouldn't miss is Reeser viewpoint. But it's a little further away, it's part of their driving routes. It actually is probably the nicest viewpoint in the whole park, it's quite beautiful. 
and then there's Reeser Lake. And if you drive just another 20 minutes, you'll actually hit the Saskatchewan border. For our first time exploring southeastern Alberta, Cypress Hills was a lot of fun, but another place we were told we shouldn't miss is Red Rock Coulee Natural Area, a really unique place that features some truly unique formations. This area contains large red spherical sandstone concretions that have eroded out of the softer bedrock, the best example of spheroid rock formations in Alberta. Measuring up to two and a half meters in diameter, they're actually some of the largest in the world. Well, that's it for this video. We had a lot of fun in Cypress Hills, right? Yeah, we did. We're definitely gonna go back. Yeah, there's so many other things we want to do there, and this was also a really cool place to check out. So we hope we inspired you to visit this little gem of southeastern Alberta. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and for more things to do in Canada, visit our website at mustdocanada.com. It's always so impressive how nature works. Like these really look like someone placed them out of nowhere and they're so rounded and in a sense perfect. Like how do they form? According to conspiracists, it's actually a pretty simple explanation. Aliens. Aliens put them here for some reason. <laughs>